Hey everyone and welcome back to my Revel channel. If you have not, make sure you check out my Critics' Choice Awards review. That will be in the description. But we're going to revel about Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7, Episode 14, Shake Up and Makeups. There was a lot of shakeups, a few makeups, but all information for outside sources will be in the description box because it pertains to this. And if the video is a little long, I do apologize. I normally try to keep it under 15, 14 minutes or whatever. The episode opens back up with Sharice and Karen's argument. Side note, I did not comment last week about Giselle's geriatric comment in her confessional. Ma'am, a quick Google search lets you know that Karen is 59, Sharice 57. You're a measly 52. You're not that far off from them. So how can you make that type of statement? Go ahead, go outside and touch a little bit of grass. We also see them still going at it. Both of the women hit the table. They jump up. They're saying how they dislike each other. Everyone else is trying to de-escalate the situation. And this is one of the fastest de-escalations I think I have ever seen in my life. No, 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 no. Two seconds later. God, what did I say that was Therese, disrespectful to your I mother? I question your genuineness. How do you do all that? And then it's, this is my issue that I really have with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, where did that even come from? That lets me know that you were doing too much. Karen mentions that her issue is that with Sharice, you came to the funeral and you didn't just come there to support me. You came there and then later, like a couple of, what, two months afterwards, you sat there and you tried to bring it up on camera at Candace event. Sharice then said that she was being a good friend because she was there for Karen, but Karen wasn't there for her. Then we get Sharice's confessional. I think Karen is trying to convince other people that I have ill intentions. So she's using these stupid scenarios as excuses. Side note, this synthetic wig is not it. Bring it back, give it back to Giselle and her hairstylist. And I only say this because this looks like something Giselle would wear. But Sharice feels like she was being a real friend of Karen and Karen didn't reciprocate that. I understand both sides, but here's the thing. More information has come out and I'll get into that a little later. Karen says in the community, Sharice is known for attacking people's families and that's why she's not at people's events. Sharice bangs on the table and says, says who? With Karen says she's known for dragging friends. I don't know Sharice like that, but we did see her bring up the rumors about Karen and Blue Eyes. I believe she was trying to bring up information on Monique and her husband and the, and the kid. And I believe that was all, well, we know that was a lie or whatever, but I believe she was supposed to be that driving force behind that. We can't forget that her and Monique were supposed to bring up information on Sherman when it comes to Giselle and the girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or whatever it was, ex-wife. She was a part of all that. So a lot of this information is not far-fetched when it comes to Sharice. Sharice says that Karen is lying and there's people who used to be friends with Karen that has a lot to say about her. And then she reveals. But do I come to the table and talk about Therese, your friends? It is what they it have is. To get you it out is. And all that stuff? I know she has been rehab because I know her friends. Her friends also live in Potomac. And a few years ago, Karen went to rehab in Florida and the girls went to Florida, got her out of rehab and they party. Well, Sharice, you did just bring this up at the table and a real friend would not bring up something as so strong as that about a friend. Like, why do you guys do that? And then this information plus the other stuff could be why Karen says, I don't f that woman because I don't that woman. Karen says she hasn't been to rehab and she also brings up that she can't even go to Safeway anymore because of Sharice and I was sitting there like what is a Safeway? So Mia and Wendy's face was my face because ma'am what is that and what does that have to do with what's going on right now? Sometimes Karen be saying some stuff and I be looking like where does that even come from? But I did do a little research and I believe that Safeway is a grocery store. But Sharice then says that Karen was messing up family. She was messing with a married man. Karen calls her dusty and dated. <laughs> She, she does look a little dusty sometimes, I'll be honest. But based on the confessionals from Robin and the scene we got from Candace and what Sharice said in the past, I believe Blue Eyes is supposed to be the married man she's speaking of or whatever. That is still allegations. We don't know the truth about that. And if it is true, what friends brings up their friends' dirty laundry? That's all I'm gonna say on that. They decide to table the discussion and they jump on to other issues at hand. Side note, I do have to bring this up real quick. This did happen later on in the episode, but it kind of correlates to what happened in this disagreement before I hop into the next one but they made it back to the hotel after coming back from wherever they came from and we see Ashley and Sharice talking Ashley tells her she's glad she stood up for herself against Karen Sharice feels Karen doesn't know how to be a good friend and says Karen sent her a one-line text saying sorry for your loss when she lost her family someone in her family. Here's the thing, Sharice did mention that she lost, she lost a lot of people in her family and I felt bad for her. Like that is something that, it's sad. It is really sad. But while that is sad, I do have to state that the statements that she made in this confessional did not help her with her case. Bring the receipts. Do I need to bring the receipts? 
Karen did reveal on her social media. She did reach out to her and it was not a one-line text. Here's the image right here. She chose to post a video and it says, Hey, I'm Karen. I'm the creator of Bad Bitch Media. I'm currently working on a documentary about Bad Bitch Media. She chose to post a video and here's why this is better than posting a snapshot or something. We can see it in real time and we know it's not Photoshop. Sharice, this goes against everything you just stated and makes me wonder, were you telling the truth about anything else when you're sitting at that table? Candace says that Jacqueline expressed that she was very hurt. Giselle amends it and says she's recommend Mia and her fix it. Jacqueline says that she can have that conversation with her, but it'll be separately because she's just getting to know them. I think private conversations definitely work because you don't have everybody else's inputs and you can really get to the root of the issues. And while that is normal for me, I want y'all to hear me out real quick. Mia made some crazy statements in front of the whole group so that conversation can be had at that table so it can be cleared up because right now people could easily be looking at her as a home wrecker allegedly we don't know how true that is so this could have definitely flushed out those true or false statements or maybe Jacqueline just doesn't care to even clear it up and she doesn't care what the other women thinks but everybody leaves the dinner and then we get the women having fun they're dancing they're doing what they're doing and then we have Mia and Jacqueline talking Jacqueline says it was unacceptable for me Mia to say she doesn't have friends and to make accusations of her being with married men. She felt Mia was insinuating her messing with Gordon and the things she was saying are lies. Mia feels like, well, what did I lie about? And tells her to own her stuff. Jacqueline then says the friendship is over and like I said in my last review, the friendship should have been over because y'all have done a lot to each other. But on the screen from what we can see right now, Mia is not a real friend. Why would you double down on that? Why has you not came out and said no she did not mess with Gordon why are you fueling this fake storyline it's giving desperate Mia this was the time for you to actually sit down talk about it but of course Mia you just you, you you just don't know how to be real so it is what it is something is wrong with her I want to add this here now because it relates to this later on in the episode again I have another one that kind of relates to something but it was like small little stuff here and there we see Karen and Candace sitting down and they talk about Jacqueline and Mia and they say they feel like they could work this out if they keep everyone out of it but clearly we know that that didn't happen but in their professionals we see them both talk about each other in a disagreement fights are for the most part like so surface but when you involve other people now it just changes the dynamic and it's hard to forgive and it's hard to forget me i believe you definitely done this to start stuff to have a storyline because ma'am you involve the other people by talking about it at the airport and saying what she said at that brunch now mia has just turned into a whole different person where it's more about how many businesses she has and i'm a boss and i feel like i can't trust her at this point there's nothing wrong with being a boss i do understand what she's saying she feels mia has lost sight of who she really is basically because mia needs to touch some grass too she's been on this reality show she's okay with pushing certain narratives whether that is true or not and it kind of goes against who she really is because you literally will put money and fame or whatever just to be recognized above who you truly are or what you're known to be so now it's day two of the trip and everyone is getting ready they're eating breakfast we then see the women meet ashley on the beach for yoga except for karen Karen, Candace, and Wendy, Robin, and Sharice. Not interested. I don't want, uh, Sandy. I love Ashley. It is her birthday. Can we just lay on a damn pool chair and drink pina coladas? I get it. But listen, yoga is great. It just doesn't help you relax. It can actually help you strengthen and tone the body. And then it also helps with flexibility. It can help with the breathing. And a lot of times, a lot of people don't know that their breathing is off. So I definitely recommend breathing exercises when you go and do yoga. The women are trying to figure out what is this? I was trying to figure out the same thing. And the moves, I don't know. It, it's... <laughs> I don't know what they had going on. Maybe she was teaching them some stuff or maybe they were doing it wrong. If you have done Kundalini, let me know. But we also see Candace and Karen off to the side and she tells her how they had fun at the bar. Like I said, they discussed Mia and Jacqueline. And then Karen says she was hoping she could come out here, have some fun and just have a good time and relax. Candace feels like, you know, what changed? You can still have a good time, but after the disagreement from the night before, what really went on? She says there was a lot of table banging. Karen says she doesn't recall the banging at the table she just remembers it being banged and like it wasn't her or whatever karen you did sharice banged the table you did the same thing and i guess it was like let me one up you or whatever when y'all got into it then karen says you know last night proved what she knew about sharice all along i understand that and then she says you know i can be cordial we'll see we'll see if they can be cordial we see the women on their way to the cenote and then they say it has all these healing properties and different stuff like that karen asks robin on the way to the cenote you know when is the wedding date robin says i have one but it's none of your business 
business. When they make us do the cenote, it looks beautiful. Everyone gets in, they're having a good time, but that quickly turns sour because they learn that it is a mosquito pit. If I was on this trip, I wouldn't be, I would be on the bus. I would not be in that water. I don't do bugs. I don't do mosquitoes. So the women immediately try to get out and they're like, let's just go get some lunch. Karen asks Ashley and Candace, you know, how are y'all now? She mentions Ashley bringing Deborah to her live show and asks if Ashley regrets bringing her. Brought Deborah was because if someone was saying that about Michael, I would want to hear it from that person's mouth. If you wanted to tell me that the cocktail waitress at MGM wanted to tell me about what Michael was doing, I'd be like, yes, where's she at? Candace. A lot of the way that you think about relationships is because the relationship that you are now out of had toxic notes and had trust issues. My hope for you, honestly, is that you receive a relationship where you don't have to feel like, oh, I need to know talking to my man. Like, that. It, that's not what it should feel like. Because I don't need to know that. Because I know my man. This is one of the most simplest and non-controversial ways of saying it's time to get out of those toxic traits. Ma'am, it's time to do something different because all that isn't needed when you know you got a good man. Ashley agrees with Candace and she says that there are elements within her marriage that is toxic and she's sorry for bringing Deborah if it felt harmful because she wasn't trying to be. But here's the thing. We didn't forget the little meeting you had with your PLT group or whatever y'all want to call yourselves and Giselle before y'all even went to the live show. Y'all definitely said that that in motion and y'all knew what you were doing so don't try to come on our screen and say something different candace feel like they can be good one minute and then they're off the next because ashley constantly does things that kind of contradicts the movement of where they're trying to go and she just feel like it's not genuine ashley says that you know that's fair and she thinks that she has resentment towards candace because of how insensitive candace was with her miscarriage both of them were in the wrong yes ashley definitely does a lot of things that contradicts everything whenever they're trying to be cool but i'm not gonna sit here and act like candace was not dead wrong for making those statements that she made production y'all came through with the footage for both of their backings they both agreed to just leave it here we all know that's not gonna last long but hey it is what it is everybody is at the dinner and ashley asks about the wedding again and giselle face is a tell all at this moment robin tells us she's not sure if she wants a traditional wedding and they're gonna get married in jamaica a day after her brother-in-law's wedding uh probably more september for uh that is uh spring summer Okay. September, spring, show spring, um, summer. Karen doesn't believe it. Candace is excited about it. Ashley brings up that, you know, she's here for being efficient. And we see the women say they'll plan her bachelorette party or whatever. Giselle then changes the subject. She mentions how she doesn't like what happened between Karen and Sharice. And she thinks Sharice's character was assassinated. And she doesn't know her to be a family destroyer, but someone that is honest. The key word here, Giselle, is you know. Just because somebody is one way with you doesn't mean they're the other way with somebody else. And it just is what it is. But then we see Giselle say, if there's gonna be like a queen of Potomac, that is Sharice. <laughs> Hear me out, y'all. Sharice may be that girl in Potomac, but on the show, not so much. She hasn't made her present known this year. And yes, she is the reason the group has come together. I talked about that on my Real Housewives of Dubai season review. I did talk about how with most of the shows when it's new, you're gonna get somebody that's that staple and you're gonna bring in their friends or acquaintances or something along those lines. Dubai had Stonsberry, but just because Stonsberry would be considered, you know, the queen, da -da 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 -da, she brought them together. She was not the breakout star. The queen is a yawn, she stood out. So the same thing is with Potomac. Sharice may have brought them together but the breakouts the stars was Giselle and Karen it just is what it is she's not that girl that y'all make her out to be I'm a fashion girl I pay attention to a lot of stuff y'all want me to believe she's that girl sitting at that table looking like that she doesn't even try I'm just saying she doesn't even try to make it seem like she's that girl Karen tells her to just stop Giselle says you know I can have my thoughts and Karen said yes you can but nothing else has to be said on that issue Robin jumps in and listen Robin has this problem really bad Robin this is why you had that issue with Wendy you always want to hop in when Giselle is having a conversation with somebody else or having something else being said just sit there and eat your food sometimes but Robin hops in and says everyone in the group is held to the fire for the things they say or do but how is Karen off limits in the spirit of Wendy right now 
later on in the episode we're gonna see her bring in a definition of something i'm gonna bring in the definition real quick because a lot of the women on the show like to say different things that literally apply to them so robin you said y'all are held to the fire for the things that y'all say or do but i'm gonna give you a quick definition when have you been held accountable because you sat up there and you lied on different shows on different things that y'all have done promotion for and you will have not been held accountable actually bravo allows you to get away with it so robin are you really held to the fire robin says karen's behavior contradicts the person karen tries to convince herself to be everybody has slip-ups we're not going to act like people don't have slip-ups just because you have slip-ups doesn't mean you're not working on yourself and it doesn't mean it contradicts who you perceive yourself to be it's when things continue to happen where we know something is wrong but robin says she thinks karen doesn't like sharice because she is the real philanthropist of the group and got everybody together i don't think that's karen's issue karen's issue is what she said in that video and what she said at the beginning of the episode karen also apologizes to the group she apologizes and says she didn't want them to know what was really going on but maybe it's because it wasn't that serious but this kind of segues into another disagreement because robin says so you can apologize to the group but not sharice and then candace was right on time apologizing to the group and not the person that was smacked with the margarita but okay yeah. it, what's going on it repeated itself and it was triggering to me last night when Mia apologized to the group and not to Wendy. Mia says it's because she's not sorry. Wendy says, so you're not sorry for assaulting someone? Mia says she did not assault her. I won't get too far into that. Wendy breaks down the definition of assault since... Mia want to act like she doesn't know what assault is. After she gives her the definition, Mia then flips it and said, do you know the definition of defamation of character? I'm gonna pull it out in the spirit of Wendy again. Mia, you try to be funny and deflect, but she gave facts, but it wasn't untrue. Everything she said at that table, you definitely did. You have admitted to it. So I was glad Wendy stood it and it said, I didn't lie. I told the truth and she also asked her does she understand the sequence of events because Mia says something about someone saying something about Wendy so she was trying to be a real friend and obviously Wendy missed the memo and Wendy hops in and this part right here was right on point. What memo? You don't even know how to be a friend to somebody for 30 years. Clearly you don't get the memo. But Mia stands on Wendy calling her man gay and asking what's wrong with being gay. And Wendy lets her know, ain't nothing wrong with that. And that's literally not even what Wendy said when she made that statement. Clearly people don't understand the difference. If you say that you have threesomes, another party is involved with a couple. Either way, whether it's a man or a woman, it is considered a threesome. So it is what it is. So what Mia said definitely reigns true. You may welcome in men or women into your marriage. You have stated that. Mia says Peter and G have been friends for decades with Wendy responding responding that Peter said that they aren't friends because Mia slept with his girlfriend. We already know this story. We already know that it's true. And then Candace hops into that confessional. Take the out the strip club, but you can't take the strip club out the I mean, let me not judge because it's everywhere. It's, it's at the bank. It's in the Walmart. It's the table with me. Listen. <laughs> Candace be having that comedic timing, honestly. Wendy says Mia thinks that after having an argument, Mia feels she can throw drinks in people's faces. Mia gives her a half apology and says, let's talk about the real issue. Ma'am, the real issue is why you came to that table starting at anyway. Mia says she owns up to her faults unlike other people and ma'am, no, you do not. There's more back and forth, so they table it. With Wendy saying, is this what success looks like? Yes. Is this what success feels like? Yes. We are successful. Yes, we have. Mia responds and says, because we have to to prove it to someone else well Mia you're always trying to prove different things to other people so what are you saying that was the episode I hope you all enjoyed it I will see you all next time